<laughs> look at that. Look at that one. Oh, look at that. Look at this guitar. Look, oh, I need to have that guitar. We've all suffered from this problem, but it didn't used to be a thing. It's a new development, and you can call our hotline 976 Babes, <laughs> and we can help you out with your guitar ADD addiction issues. Just slow down, relax. It's okay. The guitar you have is. I mean, this might seem counterintuitive for a guitar shop. It might be really good and, and all you need. And your I aunt, know that's crazy. I know your amp might be really good too. Could be. And those pedals might be all the pedals you need. Mm. And like, so we started talking about this. God, this was like yesterday. We we're talking about this, and it, and and Derek and I were really just kind of getting in like back in my younger days, right? And I was in a band, and like in like the early 2000s and whatnot, the touring times. You know, I had my, my red knob Fender Evil yeah. Twin. I had a Gibson Les Paul Deluxe 78. Um, and then like when I started touring more, I was like, I need to have a backup guitar. So I went to the guitar store and I was like, I need a Telecaster. It's kind of like a Gibson, but I want something different. Just, and I can afford that. I can't afford a Gibson right, <clears throat> right now. So I was like, give me that. What do you have? Like, they have these. And I was like, there's a black one. Let me kind of hold it. And I played it for a second. I was like, cool, I'll take this black American Standard Rosewood Telecaster. And those are my guitars. And my amp, and I don't. I think I don't think I had any pedals. I just had the, there the, you go. the Evil Twin had an overdrive. So like just that, the Evil that's Twin. That's my dirty channel. Done. But, but that's um. But that's how it kind of always was. Like you had your stuff, and that was your stuff, and you didn't. You weren't always looking for the new thing to to reach that golden tone. You weren't. The, the new release wasn't like you didn't have to have it. I, at least I didn't pay attention to it. I don't even think that was on my radar in that that time of my play. Like it was just all about playing, like learning to play, learning new things, getting better. Was that a thing though back then? Like were, was like were the manufacturers like pushing new stuff? They had to have been pushing like through Guitar Player magazine. I'm sure they were. Maybe it just wasn't like as readily available for you to compare it to everyone else. Well, know? I think it was the internet wasn't a thing right. in the same way. Yeah, like it, it it was there, but it was just kind of like it was just like a sort of it wasn't like in in infiltrating every aspect of our right. life you know i was trying to like, it was it was just there and it was because <laughs> now it is i mean it's everywhere every aspect like it's all i have my phone out of my pocket thank the gods because i don't want to i don't want to be bothered all the time right and i try like not look at it when the screen time comes up i'm like oh god it went up five percent or ten percent or <laughs> keep it down like keep it down below 30 hours a day please um no but it just i just had my stuff and that's what i play and and you just and you I, did it and yeah. I remember one of my friends, like one of my good friends, Wayne, like I remember when he went, he worked at this Price Waterhouse Cooper's an account and he made a lot of money. And so he was going to go buy himself a, a tailor. And so I went to the guitar store, I went to Matt Umanoff's with him down on Bleecker Street. And he was like, I'm going to get a tailor. So he bought himself an 814 CE. Nice. You know, which was probably $2,000 back then, yeah. which was a lot of money. A lot. Still a lot of money today. But um, he, he bought that and like, I'd never seen an acoustic that nice. Right. You know, we're like, whoa, this is cool. Like, he was an okay guitar player. He's decent. Like, he, he was better than most, not as good as some, you know, but in this guitar he deserved for his, like, his working, he worked tons there, yeah. of hours, but that, that was his guitar, and he still has that guitar. And this was like the year 2002, maybe? That's awesome. Um, I don't think he's bought another guitar since. I mean, it's because he plays he guitar really as a hobby. need another guitar, yeah. You know, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's a, we, and we see a lot in, like, in our business, you know, people will buy a guitar, and like, you know, three months later, it's like, this isn't the right guitar. Or this isn't this pedal's not doing what I want it to do. Yeah, the pedal might do what you want it to do. You just haven't figured it out yet. I think that happens yeah. a ton. People buy gear. It's not immediately because we, we live in this instant gratification era, right? Doesn't do what you want immediately, and you sell it before you really know how it works or how it reacts. You, you have to get to know gear. You know, I mean, that's part of playing and being fluid and being able to adapt to any situation. You have to know what your stuff does, how it works, how it interacts. Yes. And if you don't take the time to do that, you might be missing out on some really cool things. Like if you ever buy a pedal or an amp or a guitar and you're disappointed at first, give it a minute. I mean, I guess I should say with the caveat of like, if you're going to return that thing, don't, you know, don't have it for no, six no, months and then call the shop and be like, hey, right. And that's cool. I mean, yeah, or, or, that's if different. If, or if your pleasure is like, you just like to try new stuff and like, and you buy it and you sell it and you know you're going to take a haircut on the sale. A lot That's of people, fine. And yeah. I have a lot of friends that do that. I've done that before too, because I just want to try stuff, you know. But, but sometimes, that. But that's. I didn't used to want to try stuff. <laughs> I didn't. That wasn't. I didn't know that was a thing you could do. 
Well, I can try different things. Well, I can buy these things from Sweetwater and just return it, and it's not a problem. Like, that's crazy. But see, I think trying different things is totally different than being frustrated that you can't make your setup do a... a I mean, not every setup does everything. So, totally legit to go find the thing that does what you want. But you still have to take the time to get to know it. No, because like right now in my life, I'm not the same person as I was in 2000. No. And it's, I do like to acquire things now, like guitar yeah. things. I'm like, it's a, and it didn't used to be a thing. And, like, and I'm, I'm talking about me this entire video. It's not, I'm not talking, I'm a bad person. I'm like, no. it's, it's like, I'm, I love it when there's like new gear cycles. And that's, you know, we talk about NAM every once in a while. Like, that's why like, I love NAM. It's like, you know, the consumer electronics releases, like the, the gaming expos. expos. Um, I, I like those things when like new stuff is getting released. The new Xbox, cool. the new PlayStation's yeah. out. <clears throat> like the new camera stuff is out. Like the new mics are out. Cool. Well, I just use old-fashioned mics like SM57 and Royer is the jam. Yeah. Um, but but um, I, I do like new things now. New things are fun. And it's like, and I, and I, but I keep them. Right. And I, you do. I do. I get them. I keep them. And I learn how they work within my playing style and what their role is going to be. I think both of those guitars you talked about buying forever ago are still behind us on the wall. Yeah, which ones? It's the Telly and the Les Paul. Yeah. You yeah. still have both of them. They're I mean, right there. I don't sell guitars. Yeah. Like once, no. a, once a guitar part is part of my collection, it's usually part of my collection forever. Like, why would I sell it? it like, and I also tour with them. You know? Right. So it, and I could drop one of them down a flight of subway stairs going to rehearsal I mean, one that's... morning, I remember. It's, and it survived. A Les Paul. That's I'm, insane. We're going to do a whole story on that guitar. I, I can't that's, believe... Every time you tell me that, it blows I, It was in a mind. soft gig bag case. It was like a, it was a Levy's case, but in, you know, but still, like, I remember watching it go, thump, like, go head over itself, like... Ba-dum, like ba-dum, how did you not break the head stuck off? That's and insane. Like, and I was just like... And I, had my, I had my headphones on, my sunglasses, my Nesquik. I used to always drink a Nesquik every morning. That was my breakfast. Probably not the healthiest <laughs> of choice. Of I'm walking down the steps, I grab it. I'll tell this whole story again in this video But um, when we talk about the guitar, but... It, no, like, that was like, I had my guitars and my amps and no pedals. I had a Tube Screamer. There you I, go. I had my, my TS9 that I bought at Guitar Center in Nashville, like in like the early 90s when I was visiting there before I even lived there, I think. It was just like, oh, wow. Cool. I'll get this green one because Steve Ray Vaughan plays one of those. No, I am probably the opposite of that. I have traded lots, <laughs> traded, bought, and sold lots you of guitars. You are a whore within, within this gear. <laughs> but that's, that's good because I get but, to see all your new stuff. But I have recently settled into sort of the mindset of and instead of trading and buy like just oh okay i'll i will keep these nice guitars i think i've gotten to a point where like all my guitars i really love until the two rocks yeah. show up <laughs> you're gonna be so sunk like, oh. those things are different yeah you will yeah. have a two rock as I well. absolutely it's, that's guaranteed it, that ruined my life just just i was i was fine out. with fenders i was just completely fine i just that messed me off i hate those amps <laughs> so mad so horrible just, people just, they are I mean, elon's a bad bad person he's a bad man he is. He's like he's like those three sirens in the in Oh Brother Where Art Thou. Plug your ears. Hey, yo, run, run. Right. Like playing that great. And like I mean, if you don't like the South, that moment alone. Just watch that movie. The rest of the movie shows the bad parts of the South. But um, of this historicalized, fictionized, but real bad parts of the South. But that's a great part of that movie when those beautiful women come out of the water to kill the boys. That's a great. That's a great movie. <laughs> that is a great. Like that's that's George Clooney at his finest. Yeah. And so it is like he's, it's a great movie. Like it's it gets you like you get to read a Greek myth in the telling. It's just, you know it's based on Homer's t- telling of the Odyssey, I believe. And then it's, it's but in like deep South, you know, chain gang period, yeah. Jim Crow laws, like everything. Just it's it's you know we got Robert Johnson references. You got John Goodman in there. It's a hilarious movie. I Pretty highly cool. recommend it. Great music too. Um, got it. it's the it's the top selling at the time. It was the the highest selling independent record like ever it was really? the soundtrack for that and none of those artists were like signed at that point it was just kind of like i mean that song was everywhere without the movie was out you just you, yeah it, it was, was just, it was amazing then macklemore i think they yeah. might have dethroned that with um thrift shop and rightly so most people don't know he was unsigned i think that's, that's pretty cool he's an independent <laughs> cool. artist yeah you know that song was everywhere for like a minute like a good minute like a summer a whole year i think Yep. That song, I was like, he's white? I was so confused when I saw the video. I was like, it's, 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 it's just, I had, but he's so good. He, that, was, that, that song's amazing. I, it right, came yeah. on the other day in the car, and I, I started playing, and I, I, just, I, I put on replay, because I have Sirius XM, and I, that's how I listen to music. And I put that, I was like, kids, this song's really good. I can't believe this song's good. And they're like, they're like, what's popping tags? I'm like, I don't really know entirely, but it's awesome. Sure it is. Because that's part of the, the lyrics. It's awesome. This is awesome the nice little pause there when they say the bad word my kids are like this is 
awesome. And your kids are singing it like, like what is ing awesome? I'm like, it's just ing awesome. It is ing. It's Chinese. It's a thing. That's, that's what I said, I think. It's, horrible. I just, just don't worry about what it is. It's, um, I just wanted to cover that cuss word there. But we were safe. Um, so what were we talking about? Keeping your gear. I, mean, I, have no, I was like, man, I'm in the movies right now. And or not. Macklemore. <laughs> or, we're just, or we're just like, just learn your gear. Like, you don't have to have the newest thing every minute it comes out. Like, you know, it's... I know it's really weird to say. It's um, but It is strange to say. It's, it's, <laughs> I, I want the... I'm victim of it. I have to control myself. There's certain things that do come out that I'm going to get. Like It's really hard here sometimes because, yeah, I just... Your brain says to you, no, you need all these things. Like, every one of these things you need. And then Sean's I say, the worst. Sean is the he's, worst. He's like, it's funny to watch one of the guys that here. He's, he's got... I'm gonna say he has the big hair, but um, he, he yeah, he, every time something new and amazing comes, he's like, oh, I got, it. I'm gonna have this. I'll just, you just take it out of my pay or something like that. But well, she's younger than us. Like we all went through our phase of you know. No, but I didn't awesome go things. through. That. You didn't go through That's it because you're a strange. But I don't think mutant. a lot of people did back then. Like cause, cause I, I, I do my, think it was different. And my back whole then. band days, like no one was like, oh, I got this new like guy had his Les Paul, guy had his Strat, guy had right. his Telly, guy had his like. We, and then I saw like an Ec, not not an Echo Park. It was um. Uh, the Thanos. The Thanos. That was like a thing for a minute. I was like, that's a cool guitar. What's that? Yeah. Neat. So like, let's go look on the internet. Can we go to the internet cafe? <laughs> that's where you had Wi-Fi. You didn't have it at your house or in the walking around ability. See, I got to Nashville later. And so all the everybody was into that. Like, always had to have the newest thing or the newest builder. Or this guy built me a telly or, you know. It wasn't so, that way so in New York. Makes this, yeah. No, it was it was, it was, it was. It was just like, yeah, you had your stuff. Nashville. Yeah. And like, when I went to the studios to do session work or anything, like, you just show up with your guitar and you plug into whatever they had. Whatever they had. It wasn't like you had like your gear. Right. It was like, okay, like a lot of it's like you are plugging like direct into their board maybe and they're just gonna like use effects, copy it, loop it, and do whatever they want. If yeah. that's like a Broadway session or if it's, you know, which had some of the worst sounds ever though. Like you, I never understood why, and I, one of the guys we talked to like on, on he emailed us like, and he's doing like a paper, like why did Broadway recordings sound so bad? Cause they're not rock and roll. It's true. There's like there's so much they just, they record it so sterile and so stiff, and like it'd be like all in the in the system and and then mixing was just horrible. It sounded nothing like the show. But they thought it was like the show. It's just it I mean it's the same way like you look at like some of Oasis's first records, phenomenal sounding, but it took them forever to get that first record recorded right because right? they were trying to do it like a recording and like and then they figured oh let's just make it like a live show. Yeah, turn things up, compress the hell out of it. That's what I like. I know. That's, I, yeah, I wanted to sound like a live show too. And like Broadway recordings are the opposite of it. It sounds, everything sounds stiff and sterile. But we didn't have, it just didn't matter back then, you know? And, or like commercial work didn't really matter in the same way. That, those sounded better than Broadway recordings, which is weird. That's like there was that whole phase in Nashville where they, they wouldn't let the guys use amps to plug straight in. That's why you get all those weird old country songs with the phaser and the chorus and stuff on them. Yes. They're just trying to like make it sound like anything. And make it <laughs> And so there's something like I love when you plug into like a universal audio, like an old outboard gear. I love that sound and sort of peak it a bit. Well, yeah, and like it's cool. Or just keep it like that and like put the phaser on there. It's you know, there's your there you there's go. your wailing and your your haggard sounds. Bingo. But um, yeah, just just take your time, learn your stuff, love your stuff. Don't feel like you got to get the newest thing every time it comes out, unless we tell you you have to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to consult YouTube before you listen to any of this. YouTube could differ in its opinion. Yeah, that, that whatever we say on YouTube yes. matters. Um, no, it's just just enjoy your stuff. Not. Have fun with it. Take your time. Yeah, enjoy. Hit like and subscribe, by the way. I was say it's like comic Twitty says, just take your time with your lady. I don't know if he says that, but I feel like he does. Old Conway. I'm going to take it slow. I know he said it somewhere. Sorry, wrap us up. Anyways, hit that bell, like and subscribe. Thank you guys again. We appreciate you hanging out with us. We'll see you next time.